So Stephen, I, I did this poll recently. I was on a Zoom call. I had 900 Mind Valley students on that call. I was there with one of our other teachers, Marissa Pierre. And I asked, I put up a quiz on Zoom and I asked people, what are some of the biggest challenges you're going through right now? Now, what is not surprising is that the number one challenge was fears around money with job losses, with the economy tanking, with people losing their job. Obviously, a fear around money is going to be there. 29% of people voted for that. But what I found fascinating and what I wanted to ask you is there was another group of 29% who voted for another feeling. And that was this. And it tied as the dominant feeling that people were having. And that was, I'm feeling a lack of focus and procrastination. Now, where is this coming from? Why are so many people having difficulty focusing and procrastinating? So it's interesting. Norepinephrine. Let me walk you through a couple of ideas and you'll totally get this in a second and then we can talk about how to fix it. It's for, it's, it's worth kind of understanding that, that we're up against a series of fears that the brain is not prepared to handle. We are facing an exponential threat. The brain literally is linear by design and evolved in an environment that was linear, so it cannot rock exponential change. So when the disease doubles, the death toll numbers, the number of sick people doubles, right? The brain can only react to that with uncertainty and anxiety. That's a natural reaction. That's sort of our built-in reaction to this kind of scenario. The other thing is the brain evolved in an era of immediacy, right? Threats were the tiger, the bush, and variety. You fought off the tiger, you ran away from the tiger, you got eaten by the tiger. Those were the, essentially your options, right? And when you're dealing with an exponential threat at like, like COVID-19, what you're dealing with is a probabilistic threat, right? The economy might nosedive. This virus might get out of control and overrun the world's healthcare, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The brain doesn't know how to handle probabilistic threats. So it basically redlines and it won't shut off until the threat is gone completely. What fear is in the body and the brain is both norepinephrine and cortisol. And a little bit of norepinephrine, it's great. It's curiosity, it's excitement. So I want to pay attention. Too much is anxiety. Oh my God, I can't stop paying attention, right? So norepinephrine does a couple other things in the brain. Not only does it say, oh my God, I can't stop paying attention, but when we are dealing with a giant threat, the brain wants to limit your options. So the extreme example is fight, freeze, or flee, right? Like in extreme situations, the brain says, okay, can't give you a lot of choices. You'll freak out have three when the challenge is so great that you can't solve it and that's what's going on you procrastinate because you've got so much fear in your system you can't get creative meaning you literally can't get to the headspace you need to solve this kind of problem so the brain is just freezing it's paralyzing you right so the solution is you have to chunk the problem down. You have to take the economics, big thing, oh my God, I'm a, what can I do today? What can I do right now? And you wanna really, really utilize a list on top of this because we've been cut free from our schedules, right? So you have to remake your work schedule at home. And if you're not used to doing that, it's a lot of to-do lists, really chunk down smallly. So when you're really up against it, right? If you really wanna solve the money problem and the procrastination problem, you have to start with the fear problem. That's the first problem you got to focus on. I, I love the way you strung all of that together. Now, how would we tackle that fear problem? This is one that we actually have great research on, fantastic research on positive psychology. I spent 30 years kind of identifying six basic things that we should do to tune up our nervous system in a sense. And we're three of them on their energy side and three are sort of on the brain side, right? Three are going to help you tune up your body. Three are going to help you tune up your brain and your body side. These are freaking unbelievably obvious, right? The first one is you got to get enough sleep at night, right? The research says it's seven to eight hours and we're in a crisis. You can't skip on it. Hydration, nutrition. We all know what that means. We're in the middle of a crisis. You can't skimp on it. The last one is social support. We need other people at a really foundational level. It has a lot of cognitive benefits for sure, but it's so deep in us that it actually, if we don't, if we're not, if we don't have social support, our energy level is too low. We're trying to solve problems 
by ourselves. That's so hard. The brain wants a big network of people around you or a tight network of people who love you who are going to help you fight through. So there's an energy penalty. So in this time of physical isolation, you don't want to socially isolate. You really want to reach out, Skype, phone calls, texts. But this is the time to reach out. So those are the three on the energy side. Then there's three things you got to do for your brain to calm your nervous system down. And these are going to be totally familiar to the Mind Valley community. Daily gratitude practice, right? We all know what that is. Either write down 10 things you're grateful for or, or three things you're grateful for and turn one into a paragraph. But either way, you got to feel the gratitude, right? And that calms down your nervous system. Mindfulness itself, meditation, breath work, right? Five minutes of gratitude, should do that every day. Medi mindfulness, 11 to 20 minutes is what the research shows. And the last one is exercise. And this is not exercise for your body, this is for your brain. So you wanna exercise until it gets quiet upstairs, which about 20 to 40 minutes in. That's actually the front end of a flow state. It's what's known as transient hypofrontality, but it doesn't matter for this purpose is what happens is when it's quiet upstairs, the stress hormones would flushed out of your system. So those three things, normally I'll tell people with peak performers, do one a day. But during a crisis, when you're really stressed, when you really need your brain to be at its creative best, you need to be calm and not reactive. You wanna do all three and you wanna make sure, like normally I tell peak performers with the energy stuff, hey, you could probably skimp on one a day and get away with it, right? So if you don't get hydration and nutrition right, if, you, if you're hanging out with friends, and you got enough sleep, you're gonna muddle through. But now you need all six on a daily basis as a kind of a foundation for peak performance, as a foundation for performing your best in a time of a crisis. And what this is gonna allow you to do is really sort of, the, there's a famous saying, right? Never let a good crisis go to waste. A ton is changing. There's a ton of opportunity there and we can come out the other side of this if not being ready to like, you know, seize the opportunity, at least having laid down the peak performance basics, you know, that laid in the habit that when the world restarts, we can come out strong and not burned out and crushed by what we're up against.